Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to cover a new image processing workflow that I've been working on. It incorporates the ability to use Star Exterminator to remove stars while still in linear format. And it, coupled with PixInsight, Photoshop, and Topaz Denoise AI. And I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I wanted to show it off, see what you guys thought. So let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of it, and let's get started. So I chose Pickering's Triangle for this project because it has a lot of wispiness through it. There's a lot of detail in the filaments of the nebula, and so I thought I would make a pretty good candidate to try out this new workflow. So the first thing I did was crop the images down, and I combined them into this image here. And it's a little bit noisy, as you could tell. And this is part of the another reason why I picked this, because I want to demonstrate with this new workflow that I'm trying out how well the, the noise is removed from here without losing any detail. So we went ahead and run the Star Exterminator, and it's still in linear mode. Doing it in linear mode allows us to stretch the stars just to the point that we want and we can we don't need to run a morphological transform or anything afterward we can just slowly bring in the stars that we want to bring in and in effect it we're doing what you would do with a deconvolution um, as in tightening up the stars as you can see in this image here in the oxygen uh, how big that star is and over here it's much smaller and tighter and we could bring in the stars just to this level right here we could apply that and reset this and we can call that good and now we can actually use this star field in our image and the stars are much tighter um, of course what we'll do is we'll use the SCNR tool we'll remove the green and then we'll get rid of those red stars by um, inverting that image and removing the green again at least we'll try so now we have um, a lot cleaner stars uh, and less bloat and we didn't have to run the morphological transform on it and if we examine the background it's still pretty good it's still pretty clear um, we're down to the pixel level as you can see the pixels uh, in the stars and we're still not seeing a lot of noise which is really good so we could roll that back up and then we're going to take our starless image and we're going to go ahead and stretch that as well now we're not going to normally at this point I would use the multi-scale linear transform and I would apply that and we would lose some detail and we're not going to do that let's go ahead and stretch this we'll just do it in a few steps here And we're just gonna we're gonna slightly clip those darks just to make everything pop out a little bit more. And the rest we could do with curves and color masks. So from here, what I would do is I would run the cyan and the red color masks. And I would make any adjustments that I wanted to in here to brighten these up. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to move into the next step, which is to get rid of the noise that's in here. And we're also going to clear these up as well. Um, if you could tell, there's, there's not a whole lot of detail. You could also see when I zoom in all of the blotches that the Star Exterminator left and um, that's becoming a real issue so I'm not quite sure um, what I'm gonna do 
the with Starnet Plus Plus, it it still left artifacts everywhere that you see here, but they were much smaller. But but they were worse artifacts and harder to clean up. Unfortunately, Star Exterminator, um, the smudges it leaves are very large. So hopefully, they'll clean that up in a in the next revision. For now, it looks pretty good. We're going to save it as a TIFF and get it over into Photoshop. We have our image open in Photoshop, and the first thing we want to do is duplicate this layer. And then we're going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and do our editing in here. So the first thing I want to do is to clean up as much as this as I can without losing the wispiness of of the nebula so I'm gonna take the texture and I'm just gonna slightly slide it over and I'm gonna take the clarity and do the same and you can see that it's it's brought out a lot of detail and we haven't lost too much of the wispiness and this is the same thing that deconvolution would have done except that we didn't have to go through the whole process of deconvolution I'm not saying this is better, it's probably still better to do the tried and true deconvolution and use the other workflow, but this is the new workflow that I'm trying out. And if it could save me an hour's worth of time uh, and produce a very similar, if not exactly the same image, then, then I think that I'm going to start uh, doing this workflow instead. The other thing we could do while we're in here um, and I normally do the colors in Pix and Sight, but we could just add a little bit of vibrance to it um, since this is just for a, a test image. And we could also just make these uh, aquas a little bit bluer. There we go. The other thing we could do is bring down the blacks a little and up the highlights slightly. Not too much because we don't want it to look too white in here. And so now by doing all of this we've made our image even noisier yet in the dark areas. So let's save this and then we'll bring it over to AID Noise. So we've brought our image into Topaz Denoise AI and in here we're going to clean it up. You can see how noisy it is on the left side and the results on on the right of how it cleans it up and it cleans it up quite well and these are just the default settings that I just brought it in just opened it and it picked these on its own uh, many times I will change these but I'm not seeing anything strange and I like what I'm seeing so from here we'll just save it We'll save that and then we're going to bring that back into Pixinsight. So we've got our image back in Pixinsight and we can take a, a quick look at the difference between the where we left the image in Pixinsight before we went to Photoshop and before we went to the denoise and then after. And we can just zoom in here around the same area and you can see that's made a massive difference. Um, we've cleaned up a lot of the lines. We've brought a lot of detail out, like right in here, comparatively to this one. We've cleaned up all of the background noise and even some of the the noise in the nebula, and we've sharpened up the entire image. Now we'll add our stars back in and check out the difference. So we'll open Pixel Math. The expression editor we'll grab our starless image and we'll add this our star image to it we'll create a new image and here's our final image with the stars in it the stars have been reduced in size and strength we've also sharpened up uh, the wispiness of the nebulosity and we've cleaned up the background of noise um, 
it's pretty clean and, and clear looking image and we never had to run deconvolution on it we didn't even actually run color masks on this particular image um, so that saved another step right there so let me know what you think if you like this kind of workflow uh, I'm still working on it it might change some more but I'm leaning more and more towards this type of workflow uh, based on the fact that I can get the star exterminator and remove the stars in linear format. Thanks for sticking with me through this development of the latest workflow that I'm working on. I know there's a lot of modules in this and they all cost money, but they also do have free trials. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to try it out, you could always get the free trials of all the modules that I used, all the applications, and, and try it out for yourself and, and let me know what happens. I'm going to leave links in the description below to all the pieces of software that I used in this video. And if you want to see how I captured Pickering's Triangle, check out this video right here.